Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeChara coming to you live once again from downtown Flushing, New York, with day two of Build Your Business on a Rock Solid Foundation, the Bedrock Business Building Challenge. Okay, day one was, was amazing. It was amazing. It was all about uh, getting your business organized. And I got through about 75% of the slides. And, and I realized, I said, well, next time I, I think I should be better organized. Uh, so we're going to cover a few of the slides that we didn't go through yesterday because this is all important. Uh, if you're watching live, please give me a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay because it makes me feel good. Uh, I want to start out by thanking my team. Uh, and we're going to actually cover that today. If you're here by accident, uh, there's, there are no coincidences. Uh, today is your lucky day. Uh, if you don't know me, I am a CPA. All of these uh, videos, everything I do pretty much lives all go to my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can go to YouTube and search for Bedrock Business Builders. And, and you are going to see an amazing, an amazing YouTube, YouTube site that I have nothing to do with. I just show up and I do these lives and, and my team, they, they do all the graphics. I mean, unbelievable. Uh, we're going to be covering teamwork uh, tonight. And, and, you know, the funny thing is I wanted to put a picture of my team uh, up on there, up on the screen to show everybody, you know, who, who we are. And, and we don't have a, a team picture yet. So I, I don't know what that's all about, but let, let's go, Elizabeth. And, you know, I will. He Hello, Elizabeth. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is getting a lot, a lot easier because I did this last year and I pretty much did all the slides. Uh, I did all the content, all of, I mean, Haley Gray and Jenny Wright helped me a lot a lot, uh, but it's nothing like this year. And the only difference is I have other people doing everything. <laughs> so, so that's important. Uh, let's go through the, the presentation here again. Uh, you know, I'm being transparent. That's one of our core values. We, we have core values now in, in our business. Uh, another thing that I think, I hope that you know, I get to talk about tonight. Uh, you know, what I realized doing this is that I have way too much content to, to jam into this. And so I'm going to be going, I'm going to be going quickly. Okay. And if the, the great thing about this technology, and I'm going to be talking about technology and business today, the great thing is you can go back and watch it later. <laughs> you can go back and watch it later, or you can connect with me, or you can, you know, have that seed planted in your head, uh, and eventually it'll it might sprout, and, and that's pretty much how everything happened for me. And I'm, I'm going to actually talk about that tonight. And another thing I'm going to talk about are masterminds and coaches and mentors. And, and today we had another amazing mastermind uh, session, which again, I just show up, you know, my, my VA, Queen Elizabeth, I just gave you a new uh, name, Elizabeth, it's uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, is doing an amazing job. And what we're doing now, I, I've never seen anything like it. She comes up with these games. Uh, today we played match and I got to be totally transparent. I mean, I had so much fun and, and I think I won because I got the most matches, but I was cheating, Elizabeth. Uh, I was taking screenshots. <laughs> so, you know, just uh, keep that in, in mind next time. Uh, I know that you cheat when you're playing games because you're just Googling everything. I know that that's what you do. That's how you do it. But what Elizabeth has done, when we do these games, what winds up happening, the way that she structured it, is we wind up 
going into some pretty deep business issues. Uh, I mean, from technology to everything. And it just comes organically, you know. And, and so I, I wanted to, you know, thank Elizabeth again for that. Uh, I'm never going to be able to pay you as much as you're worth. So I think you better. Uh, well, you did set up a corporation. So uh, I'll, we, sh you know, we will monetize all of the things that you're doing with collaborative creators. So let's get, I hope that I put the slides in order this time. Yes, today what we're going to do is we're going to do wave apps, which was planned for yesterday. And it's uh, obviously, I, I don't think that the uh, slides are going to be in this order, but that's okay as long as we can cover them. Uh, this was Elizabeth's idea, business during COVID. Uh, it is important. I'm going to cover uh, some pretty interesting stuff today on that. Uh, the importance of teamwork, uh, these two guys, Napoleon and Wallace, that, that really uh, changed my way of thinking. Like I said, coaches, mentors, and I added masterminds, technology in your business, because I don't know about you folks, but I get really confused easily. And I used to, I, I know how to do programming. I mean, I, I at one point, I was going to be a, da data, a web database programmer. And, and some of these programs now, like Zoom, Facebook, they, they change the buttons. And, and that's why I said, you know what? I'm sticking with bookkeeping because that I know. But there is, there is a way to tackle technology. And actually, Elizabeth opened my eyes to that, too. So, uh, And last but not least, uh, actually, yeah, we're going to – that's a duplicate. So uh, PPP and EID – L loan updates are really part of COVID. Uh, and, you know, we are going to be covering other areas that, that are going on now. And, and if you want to uh, find out, if you have a question about something that's going on, because like I said, there's no possible way to cover everything. Uh, I'm planning on covering things like unemployment and, and you know, the documentation that people need for the for the, the the past loans that they got, which was something that I predicted last year when, when this all started. And I told people to be careful what, you know, you, you apply for because it might come back to bite you. And now it is, and, and it hasn't even started yet. So let's get into uh, organizing files because I, I, I don't think that I really uh, covered, I think the most important thing yesterday. And that is the fact that in the past, when I, when I started accounting back in 1926, we had paper and everything was organized in files, physical folders. And that doesn't happen anymore. Everything's all over the place. I mean, I got people sending me bills by, by mail by snail mail, I mean, which is good now because those bills take like three months to get here. <laughs> so you, you're getting paper documents, you're getting email PDF bills, you're getting emailed electronic, oh, you paid your, you know, the electronic confirmation. Well, those are all part of your books and records. Okay, and I covered that yesterday with the, you know, I showed you my file system and what, and, and I also showed you the naming conventions, but it dawned on me that I did not mention the fact that it is more complicated now to keep everything in order. And actually I might've said that I know we, I had my friend Craig Doeswalt who actually got his job, uh, working with Guns N' Roses because he had a, a great filing system. You know, he, he finally let it out yesterday and I never knew how he got the job. And it turns out it was because he had his own filing system. So that's where it could lead folks. You know, when you're organized, it could lead to other things. And Craig actually taught me that a long time ago. He said, you never know who's watching. And that's the truth. <laughs> You know, and I didn't even plan on saying that, but it is the truth. So when you get those receipts, those uh, emails, your confirmations, you got to get into a habit of saving that 
in one centrally located location. And what I do is I just have a folder on my desktop and every time a receipt comes in, it goes in there, I name it. And then every so often I go in there and I upload the, those documents into my electronic filing system. And it helps immensely later on because I don't want to spend time looking for a bill that I paid eight months ago and I don't know what it is now. So now the, the investment, because nothing comes without a price, the investment is you got to spend like maybe 30 seconds every time you get a bill to save it. Now I know that's asking a lot, but I guarantee you, if you do that, you might, you might get to tour with Guns N' Roses like Craig. Okay. So that, that's that. Now, the next thing, if you've been watching me the last couple of months, I've been talking a lot about this, this program called Wave. It's totally changed the way that I do business. Uh, it's allowed me to uh, reduce my prices. Uh, it's easy to teach. It, it's, uh, you can get it up and running in less than five minutes. And I, I showed this. In fact, I set up a, a Wave account in one of my Facebook Lives. And I, I actually sent, so the, the great thing about that was I said, listen, you could be up and running in five minutes and be able to bill people, which you can't, you couldn't do that normally uh, as easy as this. I mean, you needed a website, you needed a, a merchant account, you need a PayPal account. I mean, yeah, you could take payments from PayPal and stuff, but you got to put the button up there. I mean, that's work. So what I did was I actually created a, a Wave account. And, and let me see if I could share this with you. I'm not even going to waste time on that. Uh, but you could, you could see it on my YouTube channel. And, and I proved the fact because I, I sent Elizabeth a bill for, for $10 million. And I was checking it today. She hasn't paid any of it yet. So... Uh, it's still there, Elizabeth, and I'm waiting. So let's go through some of the, the features because a lot of people don't even know, you know, what's going on. It's so no. Uh, it's one of the, the most secure, safest ways to do bookkeeping that I have ever seen. Okay. What happens is, well, I, I'm going to show you what happens. But uh, like I said, you can do invoicing within minutes. It's going to track your income and expenses, which is, you know, basically what bookkeeping is. You could even save your documents on it. They have an app where you could just take a picture. And you want to know something? They got an app that I haven't even downloaded yet. My clients and friends are using it. I said, you got, I, I can't keep up with this. Uh, it links right to your, your bank account. I mean, it's, it's revolutionary and it's going to, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about this again. I'm actually going to show you, uh, how, and it's part of our system, our CFO system. Uh, that's some of the uh, benefits. Uh, that's some of the features. The benefits are enormous because it is in real time. It's free. It can link directly to whoever you want it to, a bookkeeper, an accountant, uh, anyone. You have all different levels of, of authority. Uh, you can get your it, – it's seamless. And what that means is it, it's automated. It is automatically sucking in all of the transactions for about 90, over 90% of the banks and credit cards. It's amazing. And what that means, folks, is that eliminates the data entry. And the data entry is the most time-consuming uh, part of bookkeeping. And, and that's why I look at this and I say, this is revolutionary. Uh, Okay, business during COVID. Oh, let me just go back here one, one more time. Uh, the Wave apps, it's waveapps.com. 
And all you have to do, I'm going to actually share this with you now because it's going to segue right into my, my next slide. Share. Okay, so that's not where I like. You know, didn't I just say that the technology is confusing to me? So what what happens? I'm going to try this another way. Uh, I'm not giving up, folks. Just give me one second here. And I think we have it. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, we don't have it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that. Uh, let's talk about. COVID-19 again. <clears throat> so I'm talking to my daughter tonight and she comes out with some, Jackie is six months pregnant and she comes up with this quote, when this is all over, I need a glass of wine and a Xanax. And it dawned on me, I said, I feel the same way about COVID. And I don't know about you, but yeah, this is the bottom line is here's the bottom line, folks. However you feel, no matter what situation you're in, I, I know people that have benefited immensely. If you had stock in Zoom, you could have gotten rich from COVID. Uh, and I know people that uh, basically it, it bankrupt them or it can bankrupt them or it, it has bankrupt them. So no matter what your situation is, the bottom line is you got to deal with it. And, and right now, there are things that you can do. There are positive things that you can do. And I'm going to try to share this again. And I think I, I figured out what the problem was. Yes. Okay. So here is the first step, believe it or not. And, you know, again, I'm going to go back to last year uh, when I was, when I was talking about, you know, the making decisions in, in times of emotional stress it is never uh, a formula for success. And, my advice back then, it hasn't changed. Uh, it's be, be careful, okay? There's no such thing as free money. It might seem free, but there's always a price to pay down the, down the line. So I know people that have, you know, borrowed a hundred, over $100,000, uh, and, and it made them feel rich. And they're spending money like crazy, and it's going to run out. It's going to run out because I've seen it happen hundreds and hundreds of times. It's going to run out. And then the, the, then the monthly payments are going to have to start at some point. You see, they haven't even started yet. And those monthly payments are going to be uh, around for the next 30 years. That, that's, that's a liability. OK, so I'm talking about people that, that got the money and spent it unwisely on things that had nothing to do with with the problems with the business. OK, they just got lucky. They, they had the FICO score. 
They had the information. And, you know, the information that they required was almost, in the beginning, it was a lot. And then they streamlined everything. All they wanted to do was get money in people's pockets and to keep the economy going. I'm going to be filing paperwork on those loans for the next, I, maybe the rest of my life. I'm going to be doing EIDL and PPP stuff because that's what happens with, with in times like this. It's still, it is still a moving target. It, COVID has not ended. And, and this is my advice. Okay, I could give you d- direct advice about your situation. So if you're a client of mine, you know how to get me. And I know your situation unless you've been hiding something. <laughs> and, and I could tell you specifically. And if I don't know, I'll find out because I'm not going to guess. Uh, because of that, the SBA site is the best place to find out what is going on. Now, if you know me, uh, you know that the last place I would ever send anybody is the sba.gov site. But in this case, there is no better resource. Uh, It's a lot better than it was last year because they sort of like got, you know, it was just crazy last year. I mean, as far as them, they could not give us information that they were making on a on a minute by minute basis. It's just physically, mathematically, logis- logistically impossible. So when you go here, don't I, do not click any other buttons. There should be a warning sign. Don't click anything here because you're gonna get. Uh, it's like a black hole. Okay, believe me, I've been here thousands of times. Be careful. Uh, What you want to do is you want to go to learn more. Okay? And this will give you the most up-to-date information if if you're doing this on your own. Okay? Okay. so like I said, I, I would advise you to just go here. Now, I want to cover something else because a good dear friend of mine, Susie Pruden, had a situation uh, that similar to what my mom just had and, and similar to what I just had, uh, which was where the heck is my rebate? You know, the, the 600 bucks I was due, I wanted that money. And my daughter got it. My, my whole family got it. And I'm like, uh, it's, it's not here. Well, I want you to take a look at this little, because like, I, I see these things and, and I know what it means. Most people won't know what it, mean, what, what it means because they're not CPAs with 35 years of experience. Uh, they're automatically reissuing economic impact payment. Well, why would they reissue something? They're reissuing it because they had a major, major glitch, a major glitch. And I'm going to explain how it, what it is. I have no idea how it happened, uh, but this is where we are, folks. Uh, so what happened for some p- taxpayers who don't recognize the bank account information. So when you go here, What's going to happen is they're going to ask you to put, you know, your name, date of birth, and, and, you know, they're going to verify your identity. And and what happened with my mom was she called me up and she said, you know, the last stimulus payment, they sent her a check. And what happened since then, she moved. She closed her bank account. So just remember, I said they sent her a check, a paper check. She didn't get the check. So I'm figuring, well, maybe they didn't get the change of address. She doesn't file returns. So that was another thing. Uh, So I do the the exercise here and it comes up and it shows us like the last five digits of the account that it was was transmitted to. 
which was strange because we never gave them any bank account information. She doesn't file a tax return, so she never had direct deposit. They wired the money into an account that she had closed. Luckily for her, she had an, a checking account and a savings account. The bank recognized the glitch and they put it into her savings account. If she didn't have me, I don't know what she would have done. And I'm thinking that there must be millions and millions of people out there that don't have me. So this is a major, major problem. Uh, my friend Susie called me today, same thing. She said, shouldn't I have gotten my check by now? Y yeah, yeah, Susie, you should have. And I sent Susie right here. And, and you got to become like uh, Sherlock Holmes. That's what I feel like sometimes. You know, I have a lot of experience on, in dealing with the IRS and state and local governments. I know their systems. I know when there's a problem. I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty damn good at circumventing whatever problems they put up. Uh, but with, in my case is really strange. I do have direct deposit. They do have my bank account, but they didn't put my money there. And, and I was saying, I felt like anybody else. Where is my money? And just by chance, I have a, a separate bank account and a separate bank which I keep very little money in because it's just to pay some personal bills. And I, I go online and my money was there. I never gave them that bank account. How did they get it? There are some strange, strange things going on, folks. And I'm going to be talking a lot about that uh, tomorrow uh, when when I deal with compliance issues. And, you know, right now, what I'd like to do, one of the things that, that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to stop sharing right now. I'm going to spend a little bit of time tonight talking about uh, coaches, mentors, and teamwork and masterminds. And I have a friend that a couple of weeks ago, he did this presentation in my mastermind group that just blew me away. Uh, you know, and this is a guy that said, oh, I don't really have anything to, to give your, your members. Uh, and I said, well, just think about it. So he comes up and he gives us this presentation. And the way, the only way I could describe it is it, to me, it was like how important it is to find the right fit. And, and I can't tell you, well, I will tell you. But first, I want to bring up my friend. And this guy is actually responsible for me finding StreamYard, which, which is – and just by coincidence, I'm talking about technology tonight, too. I can't believe how many things I'm talking about, Jeff. How are you? Well, it's probably all just a coincidence, right? <laughs> Everything's a coincidence. But but, that, as you're watching this, that's an inside joke because neither one of us believes in coincidence. <laughs> So, yeah, and today, you know, Elizabeth in the mastermind group, uh, she was talking about the, the adventure that you and her went on virtually. So I want to go on one of those real adventures one of these days. So We will. So we will. Tell hey, us by the way, Joe, that was an incredible mastermind group, too. You, you've attracted an amazing, growing collection of entrepreneurs and professionals. I mean, wow. I so enjoyed talking with them and being part of that. So why haven't you been back? <laughs> that, you know, you're right. No, you're right. I appreciate that. So let me tell you a little bit about the mastermind. Just, I've had my, I've had my uh, nose we, in some other commitments. So I, I, same time. I can't imagine. No but we'd love to any time, Jeff, anytime you're welcome. And uh, you don't have to pay. I won't charge you anything. Uh what was I going to say? Oh, the way the mastermind started was, you know, I was in a master, somebody else's mastermind group and I liked it, but the, I wanted another one. I wanted my own. So I started, you know, mastermind with Joe DeChara and 
you know, I, I scheduled, I did what, what we learned, right? Jeff, you mm -hmm. just do it. I scheduled the thing and I said, I don't care if nobody even shows up. And I scheduled it. I didn't see anybody register. So I said, I'm, what am I going to do? Have a meeting with myself? So I didn't show up. It turned out that Elizabeth Frederick showed up. Wow. So she actually was the first uh, participant in my master. I wasn't even there. So now she runs it all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, that's why. And she runs it very well, too. Well, that's why I said, you know what? I just keep doing it because we're getting, just like you said, unbelievable people. We get, uh, you know, it's just mind bending. Like every time, like, oh my God, I can't believe what I just picked up. But anyway, let's. Uh, so you have an interesting background. You want to give us a brief uh, rundown of who you are and why we should listen to you? Yeah, well, I don't know about the why you should listen to me part so much, but uh, <laughs> I, I was just a kid on a Harley that was looking for a job, and I had the opportunity to go to engineering school and work my way through engineering school. Got hired into a company called Hughes Aircraft afterwards, and that was a phenomenal, you know, it's a, you were talking about picking the right people and fit. It was a phenomenal, unbeknownst to me, it was a phenomenal opportunity because I hired into a team that had a great leader and we had a, a mission to disrupt the status quo within the, within the part of the company that we were operating in. And that gave me an opportunity to kind of take a, you know, a right Harley's. So you can imagine I have a little bit of a rebellious nature and that gave me a way to channel that. Plus I found that um, engineering really wasn't my gift. But I found, you know, I, I found a place where I could fit in and provide value. And that put me on a good, um, rather amazing career arc where I got to kick around some really incredible companies working on some amazing products, everything from aircraft to automotive to launch systems and vitamin manufacturing. And, um, and learned a little bit about what does it take to, to lead change, to respond in a crisis. You know, you've got a company that, that's, that's going under. Because you've either, you know, you have a major multi-billion dollar procurement program and you have alienated your customer and you're missing dates, right? Your customer's going, you know, you've always been difficult to work with and very expensive, but you were really good. Right now, you're not even good anymore. Not what you want to hear from your largest customer, right? <laughs> you know, to, things like that in... Um, uh, being able to, to, to look at, hey, we've got a high cost environment like Los Angeles, but we've got 180 plus families dependent on a manufacturing company that, that can't compete cost wise anymore. How do we fix that? And, uh, you know, and then I've had the opportunity to, to get involved with masterminds, meet people like yourself. And, and I'll tell you what, if you're, you're watching this, if you're not involved in a mastermind, bad move. Bad, you need to find a group of people that has someone that's leading it, that's organizing it in a way that's bringing value to the table so that you can learn from those that are that have have different gifts and talents and can bring something because they're farther down the road perhaps in building their business than you are so that you can can teach what you know to people that are not quite as far down the road or have different gifts and talents and something doesn't make sense to them but you're going oh no no here's how, here's how that makes sense here's how you, how you see the simplicity here's how you make it work and then to be able to bounce ideas off of people that you know you're, you're moving forward with that's the power of the mastermind dynamic. It, it keys on the leader. You get someone like Joe Deshira, who brings a lot to the table, including a wonderfully wry sense of humor, uh, that it, it, you'll get so much more out of your experience because the people in the mastermind and, and people like Joe will help you learn from what you're experiencing, but also find the resources that you need in order to achieve what you're attempting to achieve and, and without constantly trying to nickel and dime you every moment to make a buck. You know, nothing's free. You got to invest in yourself. Yeah. There's uh, a difference I, I, between right. being with people that want you to invest in yourself and people that are going, oh, that's an excellent question. That'll be another $5, please. <laughs> uh, excellent point, Jeff. And, and that, that goes excellent in, into what you're doing. But I want to point out to people that don't know what a mastermind is, that there's all different types. 
Yeah. Okay. So I had Craig Doeswalt on yesterday and he's got, I mean, I can't, the friends that I've met, the connections, Larry Broughton, you, Mike mm -hmm. Wolf. I mean, I can't, I'm like, yeah. oh my God. So, but he's got like over 200 people in it. I mean, that's a, a real mastermind. I, I mean, and he's been doing it a long time. And then you have things like my little, you know, free mastermind where we get, you know, six to 10 people every week. But what I find, Jeff, which is amazing. I learned so much from new people that don't know anything. Yep. They think that I'm like, oh my God, I did the same. Thing. <laughs> and it's it's eye-opening. It, it really <laughs> is. Yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah, coming back to the question that you'd asked me, because we we take a um, an adventure summit approach to masterminds. Because so I talked a little bit about, about my journey, but what what I like to do today is is online and offline create environments where people can can stretch their paradigm, their perception through, you know, through exploring, through new experiences, through bucket list experiences when we can get out in the wild and do stuff like uh, bungee jumping and whatnot, you know. Still, Joe, you got to hike out to the bridge to nowhere with me sometime. Uh, listen, it's after tax season. I don't know and which, I don't know which tax season, but it'll be after tax season. <laughs> okay, but... Let, let's do this because I Craig took up too much time last night. You know, my mother even said she's like that guy knows just can't stop talking. But uh, let's go. The the thing that you did with uh, finding the right fit. Can you do that quickly? Finding the right fit. Yeah, it, it's real. It, it's real simple. If you're uh, you need to raise the bar with people that you're bringing onto your team. Now, you may be a company of one, you may be a company of 100. But when you're bringing, when you're hiring someone, when you are collaborating with a joint venture partner to expand your reach or expand your product and service offering, if you are working with suppliers, and you know what, Joe, this even applies to customers, you raise the bar in what it is that you expect from them, the value that you want from them, that you need from them, the value you're providing as well and it works both ways in order in order to be able to get you know to get more out of the relationship and the key is do their values personally and in their business align with yours you know it, it's got to be it, it's got to be a hell yes i want to do business with this person i'd love to have this person over for family dinner at thanksgiving uh steve sims of bluefish he talks about the chug, he has the chug test. And his thing is, if I won't, if, if I meet you and talk to you and I'm thinking, yeah, this isn't someone that I would invite out for, you know, for a beer and chug a beer with at the pub. He's English, British. And um, he, he says, you know what? We're, we're not going to do business. And he's made decisions that have left a lot of money on the table based on that. However, he has built the most powerful brand in his market niche. And that's been a big part of it. So how, how do you raise the bar? How do you raise the bar? Because I agree. With you. I'm living proof of this. Living yeah, you can teach people. How. You can teach people the tactics. It's like there was a. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of the doctor. He's in, in his field. He's a well-known surgeon, and he made the statement. He goes, "Look, I can teach you everything that you need to know about surgery in less than a year." You know, it, it's the, the the technical part of it is easy, relatively speaking. Okay. The uh, there was a in Jim Collins book, Good to Great. He used a case study where one of the big steel mill companies sold all of their traditional mill, steel mills in the Midwest and then went out in farm country in the Plain States and built specialty steel mini mills. And the industry mocked them for doing that. It's like, oh, what are you doing? You're going to go out, you know, you got to hire all these farm kids. That should be on everyone's shelf. If you don't have that book, the good to great that, Jim, that Joe just showed you, you need to get that as one of your references because there's so many great case studies like this. But the thing was, the, the CEO that led that, he said, look, I can teach people steel. We can teach people steel. We know about steel, the technology of steel. You know, it's over 100 years old. There's nothing really that black magic or rocket science about it. Because what I can't teach people is the drive and the discipline that comes from getting up every day before the sun to go out and start the farm work 
in order to be done in time to eat breakfast and then go to school or go to the day job or whatever they're doing. He goes, those, that's why we're, we're putting our mini mills into these, these farming communities and only hiring from the local farms. And I, I grew up in Ohio and I watched Honda do that with their uh, first manufacturing plant in the U S in Marysville, Ohio, they built over 600,000 square feet only used a third of it and would only hire because Marysville was a farming community at that time would only hire the local farming kids and people, you know, people that were looking for jobs out in farm country. And then they started opening up, you know, how many miles away you could be from the plant as, as they needed to hire more people. And they got mocked for only using a third of the, of the square footage. And they got mocked. You know, they're not, they were, you know, an hour and a half from Detroit so they're they're getting a lot of bad press and a lot of people saying a lot of nasty things about them. Is going no, this will never work. This is a Japanese manufacturing company. We do things different in America. That plant has since more than doubled in size and it's number one for quality in their global supply chain. Wow. You know, and and they have had such a huge impact over. That's been over thirty years, forty years now that it's been there. They have had such a huge impact on the local community because they've brought so much money in so many other businesses to support every manufacturing job supports four other jobs. So I'm, I'm so, getting off, I'm getting off track, but it comes no, back no. to what is it? What, what are the values? And is this someone that you, that, that you want to do business with? Do they have the drive attitude? You know, I was, was talking with Darren Hardy this morning and, and he was talking about, he's doing a Q and a about uh, how attitude is more important than technical ability. It's like, look, if somebody's a, a three on a scale of one to five, Attitude wise, but there are one on the technical ability, train them, keep them and train them because the attitude is what makes the difference. That's how you, that's how you focus on fit. You raise the bar on what's expected on attitude, the mental, mental perspective. Do they have a growth attitude, a growth mindset, or do they have a fixed mindset? It's like, you know, things, oh, this is kind of the way it is. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. So let me, so you gave me exactly what I need, what I asked you for. Because you just covered the next couple of slides, <laughs> so uh, and there was no coordination beforehand. As you're so watching I'm, this, and, and we can talk about this in advance. I want to bring this back because this is what happens. People say, "Oh yeah, they were a big company." Oh yeah, McDonald's—they're yeah. a big company. Well, they didn't start out big. Everything nope. starts with some guy's idea, and then it just it, it morphs. You know, H and R Block. I remember seeing Henry Block given you know the ten reasons why you should use us. Uh, wow! Listen, I plan on buying them now, doing the same exact thing that they did someday. But uh, in my wow. situation, and because I'm I'm a small business owner, I've been trying to scale my whole career. You know, I didn't want a, an accounting practice. I wanted a business that I can grow, that, that I could sell someday. And I stayed small, profitable, but small. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, I said, I got to raise the bar. And I, I started stepping out of my comfort zone and I started uh, doing pretty much the stuff that you said. Okay. What I found out was I was hiring myself. Yeah. I was hiring bookkeepers with a lot of experience. Boom. And, and it never, I was like, what am I doing wrong? I, I'm obviously doing something wrong because I'm a scientist. I'm like, look at the results. Something's mm -hmm. got to change here. So, you know, I hired Larry Bratton as a coach. Why? Because Larry knows how to build a business, right? Yes. Brilliant. I, I, I signed up for his hire my VA business and I learned how to hire these uh, unbelievable people that are just like that story you told that they have a work ethic. Uh, and, and I found people with no experience and I have teach them. I have one kid right now that is, I'm like, Oh my God. I taught him how to do bookkeeping and taxes in like a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I never thought like that, you know, and the core values, Larry, we have core values now. Mm -hmm. And you want to know something? A lot of them were attracted because in the application, we told them who we are. 
So I, I'm like, I'm finding the right fit now. I'm stepping aside, and that, you know, I, I believe Jeff that that is the only way you can run a business now. And and here's something you made a critical transition there too. You went from hiring, and when I say hiring, that doesn't necessarily mean you're hiring an employee. That could be it, it's you know contract. It's a supplier that you're working with. But when you're hiring, when you're bringing someone onto your team, now you're recruiting. You're not hiring. And I heard the 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 inventor of Ethernet, the founder of 3Com, uh, in an interview with Tim Ferriss, said, look, here's the difference. He goes, when I think of hiring, I think of my mom being uh, out on the dock. She was a, an organizer on the docks, being out on the docks going, look, we need 15 stevedores to unload this ship. And there's 50 guys, and they're all going, me, 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 me. And you pick 15, and off you go. And then the other, the other ones wait for the next opportunity. As opposed to recruiting, it's like, look, we know exactly what we want. Here's why you want to be part of it. And people are coming to you, so you can pick the best talent on that. But at the same time, that allows you to go to people that are super, super talented and say, here's why you need to be part of our team. Here's why we want you to be part of our team. So the, And he said, in building 3Com, it, one of the crucial distinctions that he learned was that shift from hiring to recruiting. And, and so, you hear that in your story about that is you, you've shifted to now you're recruiting I, onto your team listen, as opposed to hiring I, from the people that are waving their hands. You see my New York baseball thing. And my, my dream was to, to be the center fielder of the New York Yankees. And, oh, and I'm nice. still, I'm still trying to make it. But I told Larry one day, I'm like, this is like running my softball team. Why, why didn't you just tell me that? I, I could run a softball team. That's, and yeah. that's – I'm recruiting my players. I'm like, you're in center field. You're the catcher. We all have our jobs to do. And it's it's working. And, you know, like I tell the story about Elizabeth. I never hired Elizabeth. She's my uh, – in she – I don't know how she did it. I mean, I know what happened. But it's like, I can't fire her because I never even hired her. Like, how could that happen? <laughs> so, you know, all these people. And Larry said, how are you getting these people? I said, I don't know. I must be yeah. listening to somebody that's telling me the right thing to do. But uh, this has been great, Jeff. Uh, I'm actually, I think I'm going to be able to finish the rest of the slides. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. And, hey, thanks and, for the opportunity to talk with you, Joe. I always always appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you. Anytime you want to, you know, visit us in the mastermind, you're, you're definitely welcome. I appreciate that. As you're watching yeah. this, check out Joe's at Mastermind. Keep yes. watching what he keep watching what he's broadcasting, what he's streaming. He's bringing a lot of knowledge, and you want to know Joe. Plus, you want to know who the people the people that Joe can connect you with as well. So, so do you want to leave? Do you, is there a way to get in touch with you? Uh, there is. There you want is. to share it? <laughs> that would be helpful, huh? Yes. <laughs> so as you're watching this, Joe and I like to joke around a lot too. You know, you got to have fun. Got to enjoy the joke. That, that's it's our key. That. That's our key core of, core value. Fun. Yes. Yes. You can uh, you can reach me at guest at adventure CEO. All one word, no spaces. Adventure CEO dot TV. Cool. That's we do a lot of media production in. Uh, oh, okay. Joe, it's it's great to great to talk with you. Great to. We're gonna have you back on our show again too to do an update. Any any time, and thanks for telling me about Streamyard. It's made doing this so much easier. So much easier. Glad to give back a little bit from what I've gotten from you over the over the you know now years that I've known you. Okay. All right, my friend. Be good. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Jeff, how do I get you off of here? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm going to remove myself from the building. Okay, Wolf I don't know. Is how leaving to... the building. Oh, uh, there we go. Remove from stream. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like I said, I'm transparent. I told you I have no idea what I'm doing up here. But what we're gonna do now is we are going to do technology and business. Oh, okay, no, sorry. Okay, we talked about this. 
we just covered teamwork and we covered coaches, mentors, and masterminds. Uh, like I said, my coach is Larry Bratton. You can uh, you can connect with him for free, ugozi.com. I get these free flashpoints every day. They're inspiring. Uh, I haven't said enough about Larry, but that's, you know, that's a great resource. I highly recommend it. Now, technology in your business, you could see just from just from what I've been going through. And I, I've been using technology since before they even had technology. Okay. I think I'm pretty computer savvy. And, and lately, these things just, I, I don't know what it is, but like they change the buttons on Zoom. They, I just can't, you know, I surrendered. So what I realized is actually, you know, Elizabeth told me something again that is obvious that I couldn't see. Every, every software, every program has something called help. Help. And, and sometimes it's just like a little question mark over there. Uh, I have people, clients, employees calling me say, oh, I don't know how to do this. And, and they think that I know how to do it. And I know less than anybody about this. Well, maybe not less, but uh, what I've told my employees, I literally sent one of them, uh, Lewis, <laughs> an email saying, these are the steps. You go to the help screen, okay, and you try to find it. Another thing that Elizabeth pointed out to me was that every, a lot of these programs have like their own universities. So Kartra is a, a program that we use to, to do a bunch of things, our email, we do uh, everything that you're getting about this, this challenge is coming from, from Kartra. And I learned about Kartra. I'd like to forget everything I learned because now I don't have to do it. But I, I learned everything through Kartra Academy. And, and right now I'm doing this presentation on a program called Canva. And a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, you know, I didn't want Canva because I had to learn it. But I had no choice because that's what my team was using. And now I'm using it. And I said, Canva is an easy program and they have a, a, a school and, and I have no intention of, of taking it because I, I'm, I'm out of doing stuff like that because I now have a team. Uh, next slide. Oh. oh, okay. I needed to, to mention these two guys because uh, after reading, you know, I took uh, I took the Law of Success course. That was the book that Napoleon Hill wrote before Think and Grow Rich, and it taught me uh, stuff that I had never heard before. Uh, you know, concepts. Well, I actually did hear it, but I wasn't ready to understand it. But concepts like the Mastermind Group, uh, Cosmic Habit Force, which I believe. Uh, makes it so there's really no coincidences. Uh, the definite chief aim, which I still use uh, today, and, and that crafting that definite chief aim is exactly uh, what brought me here, doing this presentation. Uh, that wasn't enough though. Uh, a couple of years later, I read this book called The Science of Getting Rich. And the reason why I read that was because I, I liked this movie called The Secret. And I don't, one thing I learned about reading is I read from the cover to the back cover. That includes all the, the preface, the everything. And Rhonda Byrne, the, the story that Rhonda Byrne had was that her daughter gave her a book and that led to her uh, creating the secret. And so I, I got the book. And it is a simple read. And again, it talked about things that they don't teach you in CPA school. Uh, the fact that you always do more than what you get paid for. Uh, the fact that there is abundance in the world. There is no lack. And if you think in those terms, that you will be right. In other words, like 
If you think you're going to be sick, eventually you'll be sick. If you think that you can be rich, eventually you'll be rich. And the only question is how, how strongly you believe that and how focused you are. So the, that's part of my story. You know, I always stick with it. Uh, I'm forever grateful for, you know, those guys uh, for doing that. You know, interesting side note, uh, I don't think anything Napoleon Hill said ever, ever actually happened. Uh, I'm not sure, and I really don't care uh, if he ever met with Andrew Carnegie or if he ever met with the presidents. Uh, it doesn't matter because the man is single-handedly responsible for maybe billions of people getting, you know, getting on track. Uh, so that's that's part of my story. Uh, I did the COVID relief update already. <clears throat> These are some of my su suggested readings. Uh, Think and Grow Rich, how to, how to Win Friends and Influence People should be a required book for everybody. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, uh, broke PhDs, you don't get rich by, by earning wages. And like I said before, the E-Myth Revisited. I would love to connect with you. You just go to timewithjoe.com, and I'm I'm having trouble. You know, uh, what a surprise with my calendar thing, and you know the idea was to make the whole calendar open for people that that were part of the challenge. Uh, if you can't make an appointment with me because I haven't fixed it yet, you can just email me at joe at bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. And, and I'll make sure that we connect. Uh, bonus info. I, you know, like I said in the beginning yesterday that you should stay because there's, there's going to be a lot of bonuses. Uh, I have so many bonuses I, and I don't even have time to, to give them to you, but I'm going to show you a couple of things that are available to everybody and then we'll, uh, we'll end it. Okay, so these are a couple of the uh, goodies that you're going to get. You have a personal file system. I showed this yesterday. These are all uh, workable, downloadable uh, systems, or you can just use it to, to check it out. This is a, a, a book that I wrote, a, a PDF giving, you know, specific instructions for, for new business owners. Uh, this is how you set up Wave. This is your, you know, IRS publication. And then I have a couple of spreadsheets that I've been using for years. Uh, a big part of, of what I do is to start out with a personal uh, budget. Uh, so, and, and that was just for day one. And for day two, what I have is a bunch of, of mind stuff. <laughs> uh, so just, uh, again, I, I apologize for not being totally organized with this, uh, but all you have to do is email me, contact Elizabeth, and we will make sure that, that we get this stuff to you. And, and that is the story tonight. I'm sticking with it. If you had any questions, I'll go back to the, the chat. And uh, I had a lot of fun tonight. And I want to thank Jeff Wolf uh, for, for mm -hmm. pitching in again. And again, my team, Elizabeth, Linda LaCour, uh, Janine, Lewis, Christina. And, and let's do it. Thank you, folks. God bless. Over and out. See you tomorrow. Thank you.